This is the Barton Swing Aqueduct. It's a brilliant example of Victorian civil engineering. It takes the Bridgewater Canal over the Manchester Ship Canal. Apart from being powered by electricity, it operates the same way today as it did in 1893. The original Barton Aqueduct was the jewel in the crown of the Bridgewater Canal. It was just here alongside where the Swing Aqueduct is now. When it opened in 1761, it was the wonder of the age. People came from all over the country to see it. The Bridgewater Canal started a period that was known as Canal Mania. It kind of reached its conclusion here in the same place with the Manchester Ship Canal. In 1887, the first sod was cut for the Manchester Ship Canal. It would follow the course of the River Irwell. Brindley and Gilbert, the men responsible for the design of the Barton Aqueduct, could never have foreseen the Manchester Ship Canal. It was obvious that the original Barton Aqueduct would not be high enough to allow the tall ocean-going ships to pass. Something new was needed. Brindley's stone aqueduct would have to go. A few ideas were tossed around on how they could get the Bridgewater Canal across the ship canal. The idea of a double flight of locks was rejected because they couldn't afford to lose all that water every time a barge needed to come down one side and up the other. The swing bridge wasn't a new idea. As a matter of fact, it was thought the most sensible solution to replace the nearby road bridge. Working off Brindley's idea of a bridge full of water, they thought why not build a swing bridge full of water? It was and is the only swing aqueduct in the world. The new aqueduct was designed by Sir Edward Leader Williams, engineer to the Manchester Ship Canal Company, and was built by Andrew Handyside and Company of Derby. The first barge crossed the new aqueduct on the 21st of August, 1893, and it opened to commercial traffic on the 1st of January, 1894. Williams was also involved with the Anderton boat lift, another moving canal structure in the region. The first order of business was to build an island. The swing bridge and the aqueduct would be controlled from a brick tower on an island in the center of the ship canal. But before they could do that, they had to divert the River Irwell so they could build on dry land. Those Victorians didn't mess around. Anything worth doing was worth overdoing. The bridge and the aqueduct are sort of like giant lazy Susans. Swinging the bridges from a central point cuts the span in half. One end balances the other, and there's still plenty of room on either side of the island for ships to pass. They were pushing the limits of their technology. The aqueduct was essentially the same as the bridge. It weighed 1,450 tons, 330 feet long, but it also had to hold 800 tons of water. You might think, well, why not just drain the water out before you rotate it? But that's why the idea of locks was rejected. Water was precious to the Bridgewater Canal. They couldn't afford to lose 800 tons of water a dozen or more times a day every time a ship needed to pass. The Lazy Susan consisted of a 27-foot race plate with tapered cast iron rollers and a circular gear track. The cast iron rollers were eventually replaced with steel because they started to deform and over time the aqueduct dropped a few inches. Another ingenious part of William's design was the use of hydraulics. In the center there was a sort of hydraulic jack, a pair of Lancashire boilers to apply water under pressure that would lift the bridge ever so slightly. This system took half the weight of the structure and allowed it to rotate more easily. He was so pleased with its performance he incorporated the idea into subsequent bridges. He even did a retrofit into several he'd already completed. The original means of power for the barges on the canal was supplied by horses. The Barton Swing Aqueduct had a suspended towpath nine feet above the water. 
Unfortunately, it was removed and the Barton Swing Aqueduct is now the missing link in the Bridgewater Way. It's my favorite trail in the area. There's quite a diversion to get back onto the towpath on the other side of the ship canal. There's talk of reinstating the towpath across the aqueduct. I think it would be a great addition to the area. The Victorians certainly thought so. There are four doors to keep the water in. Two on either end of the canal, and one on each end of the aqueduct. This is our stop plank crane, we've talked about them before. It's a safety measure here now, and a way to block off a section of canal for maintenance, and in case of a breach. Along with its sister, the Barton Road Swing Bridge, it's a lesson on how we need to tolerate each other and get along. Traffic on the bridge and the aqueduct can be held up by the ship canal at times. It became a major nuisance during rush hour at the height of the ship canal. But eventually, everybody gets to where they need to be. The Barton Swing Aqueduct is kinda in dry dock right now for some annual maintenance. It's scheduled to be closed until the 21st of March. I'd planned to come here for some footage for another video and found out it had been drained. I think it was worth the visit. 